what is a single failure criteria and what is redundancy when single failure criteria is applied what are the minimum redundancy rules required by solas for steering gears when single failure criteria is applied it seems very obvious and not worth a topic to make a video on i would uh, normally not have planned to make a video on this topic but during my interactions with uh, various candidates preparing for exams even at uh, management level there were uh, there was a bit of a confusion and i had request for clarifications is there one consistent answer no the minimum redundancy requirements vary from ship to ship depending upon its type we also need to distinguish between minimum redundancy requirement to comply with solas and actual redundancy as fitted on a vessel again the redundancy for pump and actuators on same vessel is different the concept may become confusing but i request you please don't see this video in fast forward mode also patiently wait till the end of the video where we deal with the requirements of safematic steering you are watching chief engineer steering time talk and i am ramesh and delighted to be back with you guys and i am extremely thankful for your support and encouragement if you like my previous videos please do subscribe in case you are not done so uh, let's learn together over a cup of tea in the control room thank you so much let us start with something very simple in this graphic you can see the basic uh, ltst cooling system and you can see two sea water pumps and two jacket water pumps now let us concentrate on the sea water pumps now what is single failure criteria it means that one of the sea water pump is not available it has stopped working now this is very much possible on a sailing ship now if you are going to argue what if both the sea water pumps are not available then well <laughs> you have so much of bad luck that you better not sail or you have neglected the equipment to such a level that you deserve to face the consequences now this rule is based on the assumption that one of the equipment has failed now let's move on to understanding the redundancy let's try to ask the question what is the purpose of the sea water pump the obvious answer would be to provide enough co sea cooling water to the ltst cooler so that the main engine is able to run at the full bhp for what it is designed for now if one of the pumps fail we have one pump which can still provide enough cooling water so that the main engine can run at full speed without any loss of propulsion that means the failure of a single pump does not affect the performance of the main engine in any way we call this as 100% redundancy in fact most of you are aware that we run only one sea water pump while sailing these type of pumps sea water pump jacket cooling water pump and many other pumps in the engine room have 100% redundancy now this was very simple but the challenge comes when we look at steering gear system rightly so many people get slightly confused the answer is not as straight forward or consistent now let's take this one by one now before we proceed we need to remind ourselves that the redundancy is based on the minimum rule requirement you can always install a higher performing equipment and hence have 100% redundancy 200% redundancy this will be the redundancy as fitted nobody can stop us from installing a higher performing equipment we'll see it later in the video the minimum rule requirement as per solas it uh, tells us that the steering should move from port 35 to starboard 30 in 28 seconds this is as per the speed criteria now we have something called the torque criteria now the ship should be loaded to maximum draft and should be sailing at maximum speed when this steering is able to be moved from port 35 to starboard 30 so this is the basic minimum solas rule requirement now let us look at what is happening on a passenger ship now the minimum rule requirement requires that each of the two independent pumps should be able to operate the steering in 28 seconds that is as fitted 
the steering turns from port 35 to starboard 30 in 14 seconds if you run both the pumps. So, we can see that the performance is 200 percent of the rule requirement. Now, when one of them fails, now this is a single failure criteria. The steering gear turns in 28 seconds, which is as per the minimum rule requirement. So, we call the minimum redundancy requirement as per rules based on single failure criteria is 100 percent. Now, what is happening on the actuator side? It is obvious that we have only two ramps or a simple rotary wheel steering gear. Now, if it fails, the slip stops, redundancy is 0 percent. We always had a choice of installing a 4 ramp steering gear and improve the redundancy to 50 percent, but then it is over performing because the minimum rule criteria does not demand you to say do so. Now that we understood the basics, let us move on to see the steering gears on other ships as per Solas. Now, let us look at what is happening when the ship is greater than 70,000 GRT. We can see that it is enough as per minimum rule requirement that the steering travels to travel the distance in 28 seconds with two pumps simultaneously operating. So, if uh, one pump fails, the steering gear will be able to turn the rudder from port 35 to starboard 30 in 56 seconds. You see, when two pumps are simultaneously operating, they meet the requirement of 28 seconds, but if one pump fails, then it will become 56 seconds. That means, the pumps are 50 percent redundant. And what about the actuator? The actuator is 0 percent redundant because we have only one set of ramps, two ramps steering here, and if this fails, we have no actuation. Now, suppose we install two big pumps, it is my choice, this is called exceeding the rule requirement. Then you see, my performance is now, when both the pumps run together, it is going to turn the steering in 14 seconds, that means my performance is 200 percent and redundancy is 100 percent, that is twice the minimum rule requirement. Now, moving on to tankers greater than 10,000 GRT and less than 1 lakh DWT. We can see that the minimum redundancy criteria is 50 percent and 0 percent for the actuator as seen in the previous case. Two pumps, each of them is capable of turning the rudder in 56 seconds. So, when they operate together, it is 28 seconds just meeting the minimum rule criteria. So, if one pump is gone, then it becomes 56 seconds, which is just 50 percent of the criteria. So, 50 percent redundancy. Actuator side, 0 percent redundancy. Now, we are moving on to oil tankers greater than 10,000 GRT and above 1 lakh DWT. Here, we have two options. We fit two independent actuating systems with the pump and actuator independent of each other. You see, this two ram and this pump is not at all connected with the other two rams and the pump number 2 and this two sets of two ram steering are operating the same tiller. So, when all the four rams are operating, we get the full torque. This is to be kept in mind. So, we can see that if one of the system does not work or you put out one system, the ship is able to turn the steering gear in 28 seconds with full torque and meeting the minimum rule requirement. So, I have 100 percent redundancy on each system. Of course, there is no question of uh, saying that one pump will operate all four rams, which is not possible because they are independent of each other. Now, the second option given to this type of ships is that you can have a safe matic steering gear. Now, what is the difference here? You still require four ramps or two sets of ramps or the actuator has to be duplicated. You see, even here the actuator is duplicated whereas previously we saw all the ships there was no requirement for duplication of the actuator. By the moment you come to a ship more than 1 lakh DWT and above, the actuator needs to be duplicated. Let us concentrate on the pumps. Now, here the rule says it is okay if both the pumps put together are able to 
run the ship at the minimum rule requirement and they need not be independent of each other that means all of them are running simultaneously like means both the pumps are on and they are interconnected and they are running the four ramps so now you see that each pump by itself will be able to operate this two sets of ram at 28 seconds but when it does so for example that means if this system is not in place you see this pump will be able to operate the steering gear at maybe 28 seconds but at half the torque because four ramps operating together will produce the full torque but here i am operating only two ramps i am operating at half the torque that means on the actuator side i have 50% redundancy and not and what about the pump side suppose i just put off one pump or one pump electric motor is burnt it is not available so now one pump is now operating all four ramps so what has happened i am able to produce the full torque but remember it is going to take 56 seconds to turn the steering gear why because one pump this one pump was supposed designed to operate only this two sets of ram at in 28 seconds so when this oil is getting split to two sets of rams it will become 56 seconds that means pumps on the pump side the redundancy is 50% so you saw that on the safe matic steering the pumps are 50% and the actuator is also 50% redundancy so we can see that the rule requirements demand minimum red redundancy criteria for different types of ships what is actually fitted need to be at least equal to the minimum dependency criteria or exceed the rule requirement now you all may be tempted to ask the question so what is the great advantage of this safe matic steering here also you see every pump is capable of operating the steering gear in 28 seconds like here or two rams in 28 seconds like here but you see when you sit back think relax you will realize that the advantage is smaller size if you have a safe matic steering capable of isolating automatically uh, uh, detecting and isolating the defective side then the rule is telling you that together they can operate the steering gear so obviously you can see that the size of the pump and the actuator reduces